My name is Yasemin Rodriguez Corzo. I am an associate director on the Whole Child Health National Advisor Team at the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. And today we are thrilled to be welcoming our distinguished guest, Chef Lovely, who's going to teach us how to make a delicious and nutritious and easy recipe that kids are going to love. Chef Lovely is also going to answer some questions that we have around how to cook as a family, right? Sometimes it's difficult to know how to get started. So Chef Lovely is going to answer and give us some tips. And today's event is hosted by Healthier Generation as part of our back to school offering supported by Del Monte Foods. We want to ensure that this season is as stress free as possible for all of you. And so we want to share recipes and resources with parents and caregivers and young people so you feel healthy and ready to learn, right? And so let me get, before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about Chef Lovely because Chef Lovely, you are very, very cool. And I'm going to read it because I don't want to mess up because there's just so many wonderful things we want to know about you. So Chef Lovely is a professional chef with three culinary art degrees from the Art Institute's Culinary Art School in Chicago. Upon moving to LA over a decade ago, which we are both in LA right now, so representing LA, Chef quickly became one of the most sought out private chefs in Hollywood and quickly became known as the private chef to the stars, right? And additionally, she works with nonprofits, major corporations, and luxury brands as a culinary consultant, advising on best practices and healthy choices, all while having lots of fun in the kitchen. And throughout her career, Chef has appeared on numerous networks, including the Food Network, ABC, and NBC as a culinary expert. Chef's favorite part about cooking is teaching others just like she's going to be doing today. So thank you for being with us. She provides live and virtual cooking classes and shares her recipes on social media and on her website. And throughout the year, Chef dedicates 20% of her time working with underserved communities and programs, teaching parents and children how to make healthy choices and meals through her catering company, Lovely Eats, LLC. We are so excited to have you with us. Thank you for being with us and thank you for teaching us a new recipe, Chef. So what are we gonna be making? Well, first, I just wanna say thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Uh, thank you to Help Your Generation and Del Monte for um, giving me this platform to just share my favorite back to school recipe. And that recipe today is going to be a peach pie strudel. Now this is a more fancy and elegant and healthier version of the toaster strudel, which I think a lot of us are familiar with. So I wanted it to be quick, right? <laughs> so good. I wanted it to be something that you can quickly heat up in the morning to get your kids on the way. I wanted it to be something that was easy enough, but challenging enough as well for you to actually enjoy, um, invite the kids in with you to make this um, together as a family. And then, of course, I just wanted it to taste so good that it became a recipe that you can just go back to over and over again and making it new and interesting every time you make it. So we're going to just jump right in here. So we're going to start off with our peach pie filling. So in my bowl here, I have one 15 ounce can of peaches that are in their own natural juices. And I just gave them a really rough chop. You don't have to be perfect here. Again, this is gonna be easy, kind of put it all in one bowl and then move on to the next step. So that's what I have here first in my bowl. Now to give this that peach pie vibe, that feel, we need to season it up a little bit, okay? So first I have some cinnamon here and I have some salt. Now the cinnamon, it just, it feels like Christmas. It feels so warming, like the holidays. We're all very familiar with that beautiful cinnamon aroma. And then that little bit of salt is going to season the sweet. So it's not gonna be salty. It's just gonna pull out all of these flavors that we're adding together, okay? Next, I have a little bit of vanilla. 
Vanilla is the star here, okay? It is so floral. It is so sweet. It's just so inviting. So you don't want to skip this step, my loves. All right, next, to balance out the sweetness, we have some fresh lemon juice. Fresh is always best, okay? And you only need a little bit, just like a half a teaspoon here. And last, to give it some more sweetness, but not make it sugary, because again, this is for the kids, right? We want to start them off in a nice, um, a nice day. We don't want them to have too much sugar. We don't want it to be too heavy on calories. So instead of adding white sugar or brown sugar, I'm going to add a little bit of peach jam. And it's just because I had it in the fridge. If you have strawberry jam, use that. Um, if you have a mixed berry jam, it all works. Okay. So we add all of this in and I'm going to just take a spatula and we're going to give it a quick stir. Just really incorporating all of those ingredients making sure that you get that cinnamon mixed in really well too. Sometimes the cinnamon gets left on the inside of the bowl. You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Cookies these are cakes or anything <laughs> like that. As my mama would say, girl, get all of that in there, right? We don't want to leave anything behind because all of this is going to just produce so much wonderful flavor on the peaches. We want to make sure it's in every bite and not left in the bottom of the bowl. Okay. Yes. So, once this is mixed really well, I'm just going to set this to the side so we can kind of just marinate and do its thing. Um, I see we have so many people joining us. If you can, in the comments, let me know where you're checking in from. What city are you in? How are you living? How are you feeling? Because I love talking to all of my people out there. So check in with me, okay? All right, next step. We have the top puff pastry. Puff pastry, you can find it just about anywhere nowadays. And the only tip that I have for puff pastry is that it needs to stay cold for as long as possible, okay? So keep it in the refrigerator until the last minute right before you're getting ready to use it. So I'm going to be making four today, but the recipe that's posted is going to make about eight to nine. So all I did was cut my puff pastry into eight squares here, and then I put it on a lined uh, baking sheet. This is just going to save you from a lot of dishes and a lot of trouble later. So if you don't have one of these seal packs here, a piece of parchment paper or wax paper will work just fine, okay? So to give this that creamy toaster strudel filling that we talked about, I'm going to add a little bit of cream cheese. Now, as you were saying earlier, room temperature. Who wants to fight with tough cream cheese, right? It's not that mine. Right, you want your kids to be able to just dive in and just make this really, really easy. So set out your cream cheese about an hour before you get started so that, look at this, it is just ready to go and just nice and smooth. So you only want to take about a tablespoon and put it in the center of each piece of your puff pastry here, okay? Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to just take, I have an offset spatula you can also use um, like a butter knife as well. And the only thing we're trying to do here is to make like a little bed, like a little, um, like the foundation of how you would fix a bed, right? Because we want to put more things on here. We want to nestle on more goodness. So just take your offset spatula and just gently kind of rock it back and forth right in the center. Don't go all the way to the ends. Keep it right there in the center. So as I'm finishing this up, I think we have a question, right, that we can um, get into so I can answer for the people. We do. And I just want to shout out that folks are saying hi and giving you so much love. We have folks from Atlanta and Detroit and St. Louis. There's so much yes, love out there. So, so we're so excited to see that. So we, ha we do have a question from, and this is like, an incredibly wonderful handle so let's just all take a second and soak it up because it's at buns who brunch and just like <laughs> there's so much goodness in that. <laughs> so at buns who brunch asked what was your favorite healthy snack to eat as a kid oh i love that question but buns who brunch was that it yes okay buns who brunch fabulous question so Every time I would come home from school, my mom had a, about three snacks that she would rotate. And one of my favorite ones is so simple, but it is so good. She would just take a cracker, like a rich, something that was buttery, put peanut butter on one side, shoot on me on the other, and make sandwiches. Ooh. It was so easy and it was so satisfying. You have healthy carbs, you have healthy fat there. 
you know, the little kiss of sweetness from the grapes. It was perfect. Um, my second favorite snack was when she would add a little savory touch. She would take a piece of celery, kind of like ants on a log, but in my opinion, better. And she would fill it with uh, a little cream cheese and then wrap it with whatever like deli meat that she had, turkey Ooh. or ham. And then she would serve whatever vegetables she had in the house. So tomatoes, broccoli, and it was savory. It was crunchy. It was refreshing. And we would just sit at the table, do our homework and talk about our day. So those are my favorite healthy snacks growing up as a kid. So God, thank you for sharing that. Man. Yeah. It's like, it's almost lunchtime here and I am. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what are you doing to me? Okay, my loves, let me show you where we are so far. So I have my puff pastry here. I have about a tablespoon of room temperature cream cheese right on top. As you can see, I really focus on staying in the center here. Don't go all the way to the edge, just leave that little bit of space. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now the extra fun part, these peaches that have been marinating and all of this deliciousness, I'm talking cinnamon, vanilla, a little bit of salt, um, a little bit of peach jam for some sweetness. Now, all you have to do is take a nice big spoonful and remember that cream cheese is like the bed, right? So these are the sheets that are gonna go right on top. Just nestle these peaches right on top of that cream cheese so that they don't go anywhere. We want them to stay right there in the center, okay? Let's see one more here, just like that. Now I'm gonna be a little generous. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put another small little full full. Just use your eye here. Again, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's only fun, okay? Let your kids get involved. Let them spoon the peaches on. I'm gonna take one more small full here and that looks good to me. Now, here's a CLT chef lovely tip. If you have a few peaches left over, Look at all that juice that's at the bottom, right? Do not throw this away. You can drizzle this on pancakes, French toast. You can drizzle it on oatmeal in the morning. Oatmeal was uh, a go-to for my mom growing up in Chicago, those cold winter mornings, getting your kids out to, <laughs> to school. You want the, them to leave feeling just warm, like a big hug before you mm -hmm. let them go out the door. And something like this on a bowl of oatmeal would be phenomenal. So. Don't let anything go to waste, my loves. Use this, okay? So, next step, I'm gonna add on our remaining piece of puff pastry. And I think we have another question, right? We do. Um, my first question is, is, where are you right now? And how can I get so nice? Because <laughs> like Well, you know, we're both in hell lane. You I'm got me funny in my car, right? Now. I don't know the mud land, okay? I ain't in the best <laughs> kitchen. And I'm having so much fun with all of you today. So yeah, you're welcome. Oh, uh, I, I appreciate you. But uh, so at CS Silver eighty nine, uh, would like to know, and this is really a really great question because I'm getting ready for like weekend shopping, grocery list. But what are some basic staples you recommend to have in a home kitchen? Right, like so they're saying our family is just beginning our cooking journey and feeling a bit overwhelmed. So are there any like things you have in your uh, staples that you can recommend to folks? Absolutely. So if we're talking like pantry staples, like food and ingredients, I definitely recommend a really good olive oil because you can use that to cook in, you can use it for finishing. Um, it just adds a lot of moisture, adds a lot of flavor. So really good olive oil. You need some kind of vinegar as well. Acidity is, um, the key to cooking in my opinion because it just brightens and it lifts everything so a bit vinegar is always good to have in your pantry of course we need seasonings right whatever your favorite seasonings are and then get one or two seasonings you're not familiar with and just play around with it what do you have to lose right so of course some good salt some pepper any other additional spices garlic powder onion powder paprika things like that um if we're talking about maybe some kitchen tools and utensils to start a new kitchen. Definitely a really good chef's knife, a paring knife, and a serrated knife. If you have both three knives, you can pretty much accomplish anything in the kitchen, okay? Um, also, one cast iron skillet, and then a healthy non-stick cookware set 
The cast iron, you can use it for anything. The non-stick, that's when you pull in when you want to do a little fancy. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make your eggs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want to try a frittata recipe. You know, I want to get, you know, anything like that. And those would be like your daily go-to pieces of material. And then, of course, things like a whisk, a wooden spoon, all of your hand tools. And also, um, if you are in the market for it, I think a good blender, a food processor, and maybe even an air fryer um, nowadays. They, they just really come in handy. I love my air fryer, okay? Uh, I'm not afraid <laughs> to say it. Do I love using my oven? I sure do, but it's also live in Los Angeles now. It gets hot, girl. So hot. So sometimes it's, um, it's a little bit more effective and it keeps the house cool. If you can just pull out an air fryer, and I can feed four in the little small, I think I have like a five and a half quart air fryer and you can you know feed up to four that's you know a good family size i think so those are some things i think you should always um have in your pantry and in your tools for your kitchen i appreciate that yeah, yeah some yeah. someone in the chat said also tarragon and some a seasoning that they keep in stocked in their pantry so that's wow i love, yeah. I love tarragon <laughs> tarragon is delicious it complements fish really well um, it has that nice, like, um, anise licorice -y flavor. Mm -hmm. So, again, it, perfects, it, it pairs perfectly with fish, also with chicken. Oh, my goodness, there's a, a dish called chicken charcier. It's one of the first dishes I've learned to make um, while I was in culinary school. And the main ingredient is tarragon. And it has tomatoes and demi gloss and mushrooms. It is just phenomenal. So, if you got tarragon in your kitchen, you're my friend. I love you. You're adventurous. You're trying new things. I love it. Okay. So now we have our perfect little strudel packets here. So we have our puff pastry, a little cream cheese as the anchor. Then we added in those seasoned peaches um, on top. And then we topped it off with another piece of puff pastry. Now to make sure that the puff pastry does not come apart while it's baking, we need to crimp the edges. And we're going to do that with just a regular ordinary fork. I have a little bowl of flour here. I like to just dip it into the flour, the back of my fork, and then we just crimp these edges. Your kids are gonna have so much fun doing this because again, there's no right, there's no wrong. The flour is just like a little extra insurance just in case your uh, puff pastry is getting a little warm. This is gonna make sure that nothing sticks. It's gonna give a really beautiful decorative edge, which means it's gonna look professional, okay? We're professionals, could be at home, I love it. So we're just gonna crimp, 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 and go all the way around just like this. And also, I just chose to make it in this shape. But puff pastry is so forgiving. If you wanna make it a circle, use a circle cutter, like a, uh, like a cookie cutter. You can make them into hearts, um, squares, anything you want, okay? So have fun with it. Let your kids be a part of the process. And um, it's gonna taste good no matter what shape it's in, you know what I mean? For sure. Okay. So we're on the last one here. And as you can see, this does not take long at all. You're going to have fun while you're doing it. And before you know it, you're going to be eating real good. Okay, my loves, that's it. Now they're crips. They're beautiful. They look really professional, but it was super easy to do. Now, here is what we're going to do next. I have one egg and I just beat it really well and I have a pastry brush. We're going to gently glaze the top of our strudels here with the egg so that it's nice and golden brown. And again, it gives us that professional end result. Okay, while I'm doing this, I think we have one more question. I love oh, this question for you. We do. Right? Oh, we, we, we got lots of questions, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to one. Okay. okay, so this is from at NC Hall. And this maybe is my favorite one. Um, I can definitely relate. I got some young ones who are not the most adventurous in eating. Uh -huh. So any tips for encouraging a cautious eater to try new foods? And oh, any wow. You know what? I really love that question. Um, I've been doing culinary instruction for about 17, 18 years now, um, primarily working with children. So I've seen it all. <laughs> I see that I'm not tasting that. I'm seeing that that's nasty, that's gross, ill. And here's my remedy to that. 
I make them a part of the process. Okay, I'm going to be making this recipe. And maybe it has a vegetable in there that, that your child particularly doesn't care for yet. Or maybe they just haven't had it cooked properly either. And you let them know, hey, today we're going to have broccoli for dinner. How do you want to cook it? Make them a part of the process. Talk to them about it. If they're unsure, give us some ideas. What about a cheese sauce? What if we make it a little sweet and we add in some dry fruit? How about that? Give them options, talk them through the process, let them be a part of it. I guarantee, okay, with my 18 years of experience in this, if they are a part of the process, their hands are on it, they will taste it. And more than, more than not, they're going to ask for it again because they have pride now. I made this. Right. It is broccoli, mom. It's so good, isn't it? And then you reinforce them. Like, it is so good, right? You did that. You made that. Yeah. You helped us get it on the table. That is a surefire way to get them to try something new, like a fruit or a vegetable, which I think all of us know that that can definitely be a struggle. And it allows them to use their creativity and say, hey, next time you have broccoli, start thinking of how you want to have it for next time. And that's your job. Mm -hmm. Give them a sense of empowerment and they will taste it. Guaranteed. I love that. Yeah. I feel empowered now. I'm like, I'm going to go make some breakfast. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so now that we have our beautiful egg wash on top, remember, be gentle, okay? Our puff pastry needs a little bit of love. Now, this is a professional technique that I'm going to teach you. It's called docking, okay? The purpose of docking is to create little holes of ventilation to allow that steam to escape while it's baking. And with that same fork that we use to crimp the edges, go ahead and dip it in a little flour and just go boop, boop. Boo, all you need is about three, okay? Right on top. Now, gentle, don't try to go all the way through, okay? The puff pastry um, is gonna allow you, you can see it as soon as you press in, once you see that it's actually went into the pastry, that's as far as you have to go. So if you are unsure, just go ahead with one prick, be gentle, take a look, say, okay, that feels right, and then continue all the way down, okay? So now that we have these, oh, it looks so good. As you can see, I have a little bit of the juice that's coming out right here. If that happens to you, don't worry about it. That just means you're gonna have a crispy, caramelized crunch when this comes out of the oven, okay? A little mistake is never a bad thing, all right? So we're gonna pop these into a preheated 350 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on it at 15 but it's probably gonna take the whole 20 minutes, okay? So while that's baking, we have to make a glaze. It's not a, a, a toaster strudel if we don't glaze that. I forgot about the big flame and I'm so happy it's happening. <laughs> okay, for our glaze, we need a bowl here and just a few ingredients. So I have some powdered sugar and we're gonna put that into our bowl. This is about a half a cup. And now to season it and to loosen it up to give it that glazed consistency. So our peaches came in 100% juice, right? Peach juice. Why not use that to flavor our glaze Ooh. and double down on this peach flavor, right? So I have about two tablespoons of the natural peach juice, okay? Then we have that lemon juice as well. Powdered sugar is sweet. So to balance everything out, how we were talking about earlier, acidity, fresh lemon juice, it's going to brighten and it's going to balance. So we're going to add that in. Now, now this isn't on the recipe. Um, not necessary, not necessary, but strongly recommend a little bit more vanilla. Okay. <laughs> I've never said no to a vanilla. No, <laughs> never, ever, ever. Okay. <laughs> so if you're like me and you just love going for it, you want to take it over the top, just add about a half teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, now all we have to do, take a little whisk and give it a stir. Now, when you're making a fresh glaze like this, it's totally up to you. If you want it a little thicker, add a little less liquid. If you want it a little thinner, add a little more. But the recipe that I gave you, I think is a really good consistency. So start there and then adjust according to your taste. Because that's the fun. I think that's the best part about cooking at home. It's whatever you want. 
You just don't have to accept it. You can change it. You can add different flavors to it. You can really make it all about you and everywhere you're cooking for. So whisk, 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 and that's it. Okay. I have the spoon here. So you can see it's just this nice glazy consistency. It's just going to cascade over our strudel here. And I'm going to give it a taste. Is that okay? No. Because <laughs> you're not sharing with us. Yeah. Let me taste it. Oh, wow. That's so good. It's like, it's peachy, it's lemony. It has that kiss of floral sweetness from the vanilla. I think it's really good, okay? But here's another CLT also, a Chef Lovely tip. You can use a little bit of the peach jam as well to thin out the powdered sugar. And I like to use the type of like um, jams that actually have pieces of fruit in it, right? Mm -hmm. So not necessarily a jelly, but more like a jam or a chutney. So you get those chunks of fruit. Yeah. And I just think that just takes it over the top. So if you don't want really to use the canned peach juice, you can also use the peach jam that you already have. Again, we're smarter, not harder. Use what you have. You can even take a little bit of this delicious syrup from the peaches and add this in as well. So you got options, boo. You have options. And that's what I love about cooking at home. All right, my blaze is ready. Let me show you what they look like when they come out the oven. Are you ready for this? I am so Are you ready, ready for this. Make sure I'm being a struggle. <laughs> All right, here we go. They're golden brown. They're a little crispy on the edges. The peaches are nice and soft, okay? Oh my goodness. The cream cheese is nice and melty. Oh my gosh. All right. Another CLT Chef Lovely tip for you. When you take them out of the oven, let them sit and chill for about 10 minutes and then put them on a wire rack just like this. This is going to allow the air to properly circulate and get from the bottom so that the bottom stay also stay nice and crispy. That's what we love about puff pastry, right? That it gets crispy, it's buttery, it's flaky. We put in all that extra work of glazing it with the egg. So we want to make sure we get that beautiful professional end result. So take a wire rack, put it on the same baking tray that they baked in, and then let them cool completely. Last step. This is the fun step, okay? Take this glaze and just have at it. There's no right. There's no wrong. You cannot mess this up. I like to take the back of the spoon so that I can kind of evenly coat it so you get a little glaze in each bite. You know how, I mean, if you could hear my stomach right now, I am just, oh. <laughs> just go for it, okay? Drizzle it on, smear it down. That's it. Drizzle it on and just smear it on down, okay? I have a little left over, so why not just go for it? Make sure you're getting all the edges as well. And that's it. Let this cool completely, or if you're like me, just dive in immediately while it's still warm. And that's it, my loves. I have a plate here. I'm gonna serve one up. This is so good. I mean, how good is that? It's a so dripping with the glaze. It's beautiful. It's healthier than what you're going to get in the stores. Be sure. know what's in it. You made it. You can alter the flavors any way that you see fit. And these are going to last in your refrigerator for about four to five days. So if you're going to make a large batch of this, this will get you through the week with your kids. You can add fresh fruit on the sides. You can add yogurt, any of their favorites. But this is something that can be done in advance. You heat it up in the oven, in the microwave, your air fryer, whatever you have, and you know what your kids are putting in their bodies before you let them out the door. I just think this is beautiful. I think it's delicious. And you and your kids are gonna not only enjoy eating it, but making it together as well. I'm tasting it. <laughs> I got you know, We on this side of, of your world are giving you so much love and we actually, there's so many folks saying, I am so envious and it looks so good. So, <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. 
look at it and just imagine when it's like really, really warm, okay? That cream cheese is just got to ooze just a little bit. The peaches are nice and warm. All right, I'm going to go. Y'all, this is torture. <laughs> if you don't go and download the recipe and help your generation in their link, but if you don't go get this recipe right now, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I can't I really don't. help you. <laughs> you are going to love it. This gets the chef lovely kiss of approval. And when you make it, please, everyone, tag me. You know I love to keep the conversation going, okay? This is just the beginning. I'm here to inspire and educate. You take it. You run with it. Another CLT. Substitute the peaches for any other canned soft fruit that you may see, like mango, cherries, that's my mama's favorite, pineapple. Also, you can um, use, like I said, you can use the leftover juices here or the leftover glaze. Put that in anything, smoothies, oatmeal, put it on for breakfast. This, okay, this peach juice situation here, I glaze the piece of salmon with it. Oh, Oh, hello. <laughs> Sweet, savory. It wasn't too heavy. Delicious. You can even glaze shrimp with this. Yeah. Throw it on the grill or put it under the broiler with like some nice rice or steamed vegetables. Sweet and savory is my jam. Okay. Oh, if you get a little sweet on my plate or a little savory, I'm your girl. So use everything. Nothing goes to waste. Have fun. Tag us. Tag healthier generation. Tag me, Chef Lovely. I would love to see what you're doing at home. If you have any questions, hit me up in my DMs, okay? I try my best to get back to everybody. I love you, my loves. Kids, get back to school healthy. Get back to school safe. Enjoy this recipe. And let's keep the conversation going, all right? Let's cook with our kids. Let's stay in the kitchen. Let's teach them this important life skill and let them have fun while they're doing it. Love you, my loves. Thank you so much, Chef Lovely. Thank you for sharing your tips with us, making it so easy, accessible, and fun. Yes. And thank you for making us hungry, because right now I'm going to go and make myself some food. <laughs> and thank you to all of you who joined us yes. live. If you'd like to view or if you'd like to share this recording, you can yes. come right back to our Instagram feed at Healthier Generation or you can actually check us out on our YouTube channel and that way you can just like pause and you can follow along with Chef Lovely while you're making your peach strudel. And you can also find more recipes, more resources on Healthier Generation. And we are in partnership with Del Monte Foods. And so we have lots of tips for you, lots of resources for back to school. And you can check us out at Healthier Generation dot org slash del monte